Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Assassin's Creed Rebellion video and today we're doing episode 2 of our Elite Training Guide and we're going to cover the tank class today. Obviously if you're buzzing like I am that Malik is getting a T5 weapon, obviously he's part of the Hill class, we're going to wait for that weapon to release before we do the Hill class because we might as well have him at his full potential before we start dishing out what we should Elite Train in that hero. So yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. I've been waiting for him to get a T5 weapon for God knows how long now. So absolutely so happy over that. Right, so tank class. Completely different to the Assassin's role. You're going to want to elite train these a little bit differently. And we're going to basically break it down and go through it now. So obviously on screen you can see Mal Weibor. Now he is a bit of a niche hero because not everybody's got him. You can only get him via a cube through Helix, uh, Helix credits. But he's a very, very good hero. I enjoy playing him a lot. A very good tank. So with him, you're obviously going to want to increase his defense, his health. Obviously past just the standard three. You want to make him as bulky and as hard to take down as possible because he is going to be the one that absorbs the damage for you. Obviously, crit chance, crit um, bonus, always great. Uh, if you look at his skills, <coughs> um, he can't assassinate. He can't free run. So don't bother doing his agility or lethality. Um, he can sneak. Um, he's not great at it, but he's all right. So pumping a few into that could just help you out with them odd checks where they're a little bit sketchy. So it could give you, you know, the difference between having a 50-50 chance to actually go in and succeed on that check. If you look at his stats, um, his dodge is 7%. Not really worth elite training, he's dodging all fairness. Um, he doesn't gain anything from it, obviously, apart from not taking damage. But just save your coins for elsewhere. If you've got spare coins floating about, dodging any hero is worth it, obviously, because it helps them take less damage. But a 7% chance, it's only going to go to an 8, a 9, or a 10. It's not, The juice ain't really worth the squeeze, in all fairness. Right, moving on to Baltasar. Now, Baltasar is an epic hero that I adore. And there's a special way you can elite train this hero because he works very different to others. So if you look at this ability here, attack is increased by 50% of this hero's defense for 15 ticks. So by investing in this hero's defense, you're going to increase his attack when you activate this ability. So the more elite training you've got in these defenses, the better it is. Um, obviously, he can't assassinate. He can't free run. He can't sneak. No point putting anything in his dexterity, lethality, or agility. It's just a waste of money. You could put so many in his agility, and that 5% chance would probably not even go up. It may go up to 6% if you're lucky. Not worth it. Obviously, crit and crit bonus as well. Always worth having. Obviously, health and defense and the main things with these heroes if you look at his stats he's got three percent dodge is it worth dodge in elite training his dodge no not in the slightest because you're going to be lucky with all the elite training in the world you'd probably get that up to eight nine percent so just really 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 not worth it right york don't worry about elite training him um You've got Horatio, um, you don't need him, so just don't worry. Like, as I said, there's very few epics and commons. Unless you've done all the elite training you want to do on your com on your elite epics and legendaries, then don't really bother apart with your rares and commons, unless I mention them in this video. Um, so Yulg or Hulge, however it's pronounced, just don't, don't bother. He has got the best defences in the game, but... Oh, you don't need him when you've got other people in this class. Uh, Jora, or you, is it Jora? Yeah, Jora, we'll call it Jora. A very underrated hero, very good hero for a rare. Probably worth investing in a little bit of elite training. People with elite training have managed to clear the last room um, in Story 28 with her, with ease. So, another, as I said, there are a few exceptions, but with this rare hero, she's worth obviously putting in defence, Health, attack, crit chance, crit bonus, and again, can't assassinate, can't free run, uh, and can't sneak anywhere. So just don't bother putting anything into them free abilities because it, it counts for nothing. She can't use the abilities, 
so it's just a waste of money unless you want to just flex with a bit of extra power score because it would add on 50 power score for each one that you do elite train um arenka don't bother with just skip past her right alexius my boy um insane health pool look at that health with the elite training i've got in him mix him together with a polydorus i think that goes up to 4200 health just ridiculous um very good at attacking so again put a little bit in his attack like i you know it doesn't do much but you might as well pot for the how cheap it is especially on discount day do just pop free in attack it's very cheap you could probably instantly complete it more or less with most heroes because it's just it's very quick but again defense health crit crit chance you do use him a lot not just to soak damage but his stun is amazing area of like his spartan kick which takes out multiple enemies is awesome he can parry so he's just phenomenal just make sure you elite train them bits and again with all these heroes do not bother with agility dexterity or lethality moving on right gene best hero in the game um not damage wise um there are many many well not many but there are quite a few heroes that do out damage him but his sustainability is just ridiculous you with gene you want to increase his attack his defense his health and his dodge put as many in your, his dodge as you can i've got his dodge up to 11 percent might not seem much but he's got evasive mending which means that when he dodges he gains health back so just it makes the hero so much better so obviously if you can get them dodges in you get a nice little bit of healing obviously increases crit chance and crit bonus as well not massively um he's not one that relies on damage his damage isn't bad but you know you heal off a of disability uh, if you're very low health and RNG hasn't gone your way, you can more or less heal yourself back to full. It says restores 50%, but if you get a crit, it goes up to full health. And obviously with his evasive mending, this hero is just, uh, as you can see, his health pool is exceedingly decent. Again, with a Polydorus uh, Wise Cancel ability, you can bump that up to, I think it's about 3,800. So it just gives you so much more health to play about with a hero that is absolutely broken. So yeah, don't forget the dodge with Gene. Uh, next up is Domingo. Uh, again, he's all right. He does heal off of a dodge, but his dodge percentage isn't bad. Um, obviously, it's worth putting a little bit in there. Mainly, you use him for this ability here, which gives attack and defense buffs and initiative to its whole team for 25 ticks. So the majority of the time, if I do bring him, I don't really use him. But again... No point elite training is agility, dexterity, lethality. Obviously go for crit, crit bonus. Again, dodge because with his weapon, he does get evasive mending. So if you do dodge, you heal. And obviously attack, defense, and um, uh, help, health. Just make sure you pop quite a few into that. Make him as sturdy, as hard to break down as possible. And with that ability, he's getting initiative, so he won't be taking too much damage as it is if you can obviously get them lucky crits. So that's why the crit bonus and the crit chance is worth it with this hero. Uh, if it actually goes to next, there you go, Horatio. Absolute damage sponge. Absolutely damage sponge. I love this hero. Second highest defences in the game. Um, uh, obviously, Hallgay's got more, but... Horatio is just ridiculous. So yeah, elite train his health and his defenses as much as you can. He's not bad at fighting, so I'd probably put a little bit in his crit and his crit chance. Do not bother with the dodge with this hero. 3%. As I said, you could put all the elite training in, you'd probably get it up to maybe 8 9%. It's just not worth the coins. It's really not. And it's not worth the time either. Uh, and I've accidentally hit the wrong button, so let me get back to Horatio. But yeah, a very good epic hero that you should all be going for. He's very easy to get. He's very easy to get. He's the only one in his event. So you're getting for progression and rank rewards. And he's got a cube as well that comes around every so often. So very easy to get to five star. And a phenomenal tank. Great for the campaign. Right, Murat. 
Oh, Jesus. Uh, he is a tank. He can take damage fairly well, but he's just extremely lackluster. Um, he can actually free run, funny enough. It's not great, but it's worth putting a little bit of elite training in. As I said, it could make them sketchy 45, you know, 47% chances. Just work in your favour and go to like 53 or 57%. It just means that you're going to do it more often than not. Um, again, health uh, and defence is worth it. I would suggest crit. If you do plan on using this hero a fair bit, crit and crit bonus is essential with him. He hits like a noodle. So, oh, excuse me. So you need to crit as much as you can because otherwise you're in a fight for literally a decade. Um, and we come to Quasim. This rare hero you want to really train the eyeballs out of. He's absolutely phenomenal. So if you're a new player playing this game, Farm him in Legacy Missions. He will steamroll any content in this game for you, including Region 5. He's an absolute monster. Absolute monster. Um, elite train his attack uh, a little bit free. Defense and health are very important with him. Make sure you elite train them. Obviously, he can't free run um, dexterity, like um, agility or lethality. So just make sure you don't elite train them. Crit bonus, crit chance, very important. You can stun an enemy. So if you're critting while they're stunned, it just means you're taking less damage. I think his um, dodge stat is fairly decent. So elite training his dodge as well. I think I've obviously got some elite training in his dodge. But when you're pushing above like the 15 to 20% chances of dodging, uh, it's just it's worth it. It really is worth it. Um, I think this ability here strikes so you stun them for three ticks uh and you can just go to town on them with this ability as well you do so much damage you can apply this four times he is just an absolute monster so anybody going through this game now do not sleep on this hero you can farm him very very easily i can even probably tell you which um, legacy mission it is uh he's got a low drop in region two and a high drop in region three so if you're in region three, farm the life out of him every single day and if and even go for the low chances as well. If you're going for your animus daily challenges, um I mean you only have to rush two missions. But it is worth rushing the uh, all three missions because the sooner you can get this fella to five star, the better. So yeah, that is my elite training guide for the tank class. I hope you enjoyed it, Assassins. I will see you in the next video. Take care, enjoy your day, and I will see you soon. Take care.